For the last Sunday in October, you found the Georgia gang. Topping our agenda today, Governor Nathan Deal is on the counterattack against the teachers' union. Kasim Reed is selling transportation, and it's a horse race for president in Georgia. Some of the stories up for grabs on the Georgia gang. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia gang starts now. And we're glad you could be with us on this last Sunday in October. We are nine days away from the presidential election. Oh. We are one day away from Halloween. Sometimes I think They're the two are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> because it truly is the strangest presidential campaign in my memory. But let's, let's begin, as we always do, with, with Closer to Home, because we're the Georgia gang, right. not the national gang. And, uh, so, and that'll get an email from Macon saying, no, you're not. <laughs> anyway, you don't get those emails. All right, Governor Deal, I, I hate to uh, uh, dwell on this, but I am seeing a side of Governor Nathan Deal I haven't seen in the last seven years. Uh, this man is on the attack. He is showing his core principles. He is showing sort of a traditional, compassionate conservatism. Uh, oh, probably wouldn't like traditional me to, Democrat. He right? wouldn't like, to, like that. to have me say that, okay. but. You know, he's got, a, he's got this uh, constitutional amendment one right near the end of the ballot that says that the state could take over failing schools, create an opportunity school district. <clears throat> According to the newspaper, uh, that ballot measure is trailing two to one uh, with the voters, trailing with Republicans, trailing with Democrats. Might be coming around a little bit. Yeah, I think that's an outdated poll now. Well, that, that's are... fine, but, that's, but in the meantime, Governor Deal, not only has he done a PR campaign, He's done a full frontal counterattack. What do you think about that, Phil? He's taking on school boards and the teachers' unions. You don't see that much. Well, that's right. He is passionate about it. And um, I've spoke with him recently. And um, you see the ad wars that are stepping up now. Uh, I think that uh, you'll see a swing. I, I think you see uh, some black lawmakers coming out now and supporting it. Uh, I think that's valuable to get that black-white coalition. Uh, it was at Freddie yeah, Sims uh, yeah, down in Albany. Not, uh, not to interrupt you, Phil, but that, that's fine. But the big dog, Kasim Reed, came out against it this week. Yeah, huge. The huge. But, but huge. you know what? Very it, 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 powerful remember, statement. Remember, guys, when we were doing the charter school amendment uh, a couple it, years ago, a lot of the a lot of the black leaders said no, but uh, what over forty percent of, of African Americans said yes. So you don't know. It's one thing to say yes to charter schools, Phil. It's entirely something else to say yes to OSG. They're just too many questions about it. I think that the mayor's statement uh, just hit it right on the head. You know, there are questions about accountability. There are questions about moving uh, uh, this into... Well, no, but he repeated a lie. He said it was for profit. He bought into that. No, 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 no. It can involve. It can. It can. And that's not at all a lie. That's absolutely the truth because you're going to go out, you're going to get these companies to come in and do this this work. And, you know, we know that a lot of these companies have a for have a non-profit arm, but they're they're actually tied to for-profit. Groups. Like the Clintons, but that's legal, you say. Well, I thought we were talking about OSD. You said that this wasn't it's a national not that program. It's not legal. But in any event, you know, I, I think desirable. that I think that clearly, you know, when you when, when it's when, when you see that the polls are, are going to the one against this, it's really, really tough. Now, mm-hmm. has the governor been has he been aggressive? You have no idea how aggressive the governor has been. Good. The governor has been calling out individuals who are publicly stating their support for OSD. Well, let, me, let me turn to Alexis because mm. uh, it is music to my ears, Alexis. Mm. When Chris Riley, the governor's chief of staff, writes school boards, uh, boards of education, and says, how are you using union dues? We'd like to know what your, pro- your policy is forced on collecting union dues, forced yeah. union dues. I don't think they're forced in Georgia. No, they? no, they're, no not. they're not. But there's, anyway, there's pressure, but uh, you know. And then when the governor himself it's says, you know what? Stuff. We gave you money for pay raises, three percent pay raises for teachers, and you ignored us, hmm. and you used it to stop furloughs. I understand the economics of it. Yes. But nonetheless. It's music to my ears that somebody's taking on the education establishment. Because if I'm on a school board that has failing schools, I wouldn't want to show my face in public. I think the governor's starting to show them up. 
Well, I think it's a ba it's a political battle, and I think the governor's being heavy-handed with his uh, tactics to to get the vote that he wants to get. But the point is, with the school board objection, is that it's taking away their authority and control, local control, which is what a lot of people object to. And the Opportunity School District sets up a, a separate state superintendent temporarily for five years. They can take the school for at least a minimum or a maximum of five years. But many and of they, the schools have been and, failing for over 10 and 15 but, but it years. does not also mean that they have not been improving. And again, it's all tied to socioeconomic well, conditions. Well, sure they're improving, but they're not there yet. So Well, so let them continue to right, improve. Like, just these schools are not improving. Well, uh, you know, well, a, lot of these, a lot of these schools are improving, and I think in large part because they face this threat of, of this takeover. Right? Kasim Reed and says th there are no failing schools. Who said that? Kasim. He said no, there are I don't no failing think schools. that. I don't think that he ever said, he said that we can't there were say no these failing, schools, failing. Are failing schools. Well, I don't think that, and, and I've said that that I don't think that this is the right context well, in which to right have this conversation. Right. It's not the right characterization to go around labeling, stigmatizing these schools as failing, especially when the state of Georgia <laughs> put them in the position to do so in the first. Place? Well, well, don't, we, don't, we, don't we need to know? That ain't where we need to be. Don't we need uh, to no, know let's just get back to, to first improved. principles here. The governor, I think, has been uh, very, very forthright and compassionate when it comes to this issue. The governor thinks that if we don't improve our educational system, we're not going to be able to move forward economically. This is the best thing for the citizens of the state of and Georgia. He's right. And he's, he's right. right about that. He's just got the wrong, wrong vehicle. I want That's to ask, all. I want it's the wrong ask, vehicle. I want to ask Alexis a question I asked you, which you couldn't answer. Uh, and I understand you're, it was a philosophical kind of discussion, but, but Alexis. Yes. Do you trust the DeKalb School Board to deal with one of the largest numbers of failing schools in the state? They have failed consistently mm. to deal with scores of schools, not scores, but more than a dozen schools in DeKalb County. And there's, no, there's some sign of improvement. You're right, Jeff, some sign of improvement. Do you trust them or would you trust professionals? Well, professionals are running the school system. No, they're not. It's DeKalb. Come on. The, the it's DeKalb. Well, 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 if and I can, plus, DeKalb had... Well, I also, mean, DeKalb, just let me right, put in one, right. one more other point. Is that DeKalb has been through so much. They had this whole school board removed and then people replaced uh, in, in their stead. DeKalb had the most professional school board in the state of Georgia, if not in the nation, because the governor had appointed them. And that's the power of, <laughs> right. of the executive in the state of Georgia. How come the schools are still failing? If he wants, to go to, he wants to go to war against school boards, and I think that once this thing fails, he most certainly will. Well, he is going to war on school He can just go around... Uh, uh, replacing school I, boards will well, you know, I, I think Dick makes a good point <laughs> right. because, you know, the, the local school boards are not sacrosanct. There can be grade padding, there can be cheating, there can be all sorts of things that are not addressing and it's temporary, Alexis, you, as you Five and I years, agree. Five years, temporary, Why not give that's it a, a whole elementary because school career. Because the, the, the Democrats and the liberals and the unions have no solution for these school right, boards. I get I, on to, okay. Let me get on to two other things real all quick. Right. We're, we, we, we're going to beat this up again next week, I guarantee you, because I'm getting passionate about it now uh, the the other amendments on the ballot real quickly of course are reforming the judicial qualifications commission we've talked about that uh, taxing strippers to stop sex trafficking it should doesn't we, say that but that's pretty pick good on the adult entertainment industry to do a tax there's, there's a lot of uh, libertarians and others are saying what, why are we picking on a on a legal industry I in, live in Brookhaven I say yes okay uh, that's another issue <laughs> uh, and then finally if you blow your hand off with fireworks the tax on the fireworks that blew your hand off will go to, we'll help go to a trauma fund. We'll to help you. We're going to do one pants. state story in a minute, and it's a big one. So stay with us when we return. It might be the biggest issue facing the state of Georgia in the last decade. Stay with us. Have a question or comment for the Georgia gang? Visit their website at fox5atlanta.com. You can talk about constitutional amendments, you can talk about Senate races, you can talk about Trump versus Clinton, but I will tell you that as we speak, probably the most important issue facing the state of Georgia is the water wars with Florida and Alabama. Hmm. Phil, the trial begins tomorrow, Halloween, in Portland, Maine, where the uh, federal mediator lives. Well, that's right. It's a road show going to his uh, home turf. And this could be Halloween scary. I am very upset and all Georgians ought to be upset that the mediation has failed. I, I thought that we would come to some sort of agreement. Especially and, among three Republican uh, uh, governors. Well, it, well, because, you know, you got Marco Rubio. You remember he took a strong stand against Georgia 
and uh, they've all dug in their heels mm -hmm. and the mediation obviously didn't work. Uh, I think this could be very serious if Georgia loses. I'd, I'd like to see you know more in-depth reporting on this. I'm wondering if we lose, God forbid, I'm just giving scenarios, could there be water rationing? Well, of course there could, and I was struck by something someone in Alabama said. I don't recall if it was the governor or not, but the Alabamian said, you know, Georgia hasn't taken steps that should have been taken to alleviate this problem, such as construction of reservoirs, uh, all the common sense things. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that a lot in but Georgia. But we have been doing construction of reservoirs. But uh, well, I know. And, that, and I think the Florida case, just for viewers, I mean, they're claiming that their oyster beds are being effect, affected, and this has been knocked down, I think, a lot of these, if you study these arguments. But, uh, I'm, you know, whenever it, something goes to court, you don't know what's going to happen. Well, and the reservoirs was a big... Uh, item on the agenda for Governor Rory Barnes, who was defeated. And well, most of them never really got built, did they, Jeff? You know more about well, there this was a, yeah, Well, there was a, there, uh, I there think are that, now some built. I think. Uh, a few. It's just a long, That's long process. It's a process that can take, because it's a federal process. We can't just well, it fell out of the priority build, list, build them on our own. And you've got to get federal approval to build these things. And it can take 10, 15, and 20 years And you remember the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has changed their uh, criteria, too, that well, we have they, to follow. Well, they, they, they have, but get it, securing that, that federal permit to build a reservoir is not an easy thing. It's a long process. It's an expensive process. That's what I was and Thank a, you for articulating that. And a lot of the localities uh, just haven't been able to go through that. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, as was pointed out uh, in an ARC breakfast uh, Friday morning, you know, we've, we've had tremendous growth in our in, in this area over the last 10, 15 years, but there's been a 10 percent decrease in, in consumption. And that shows that people are conserving water. They're doing a better job, whether it's low flow toilets. And we or, are in a drought, and I've noticed some and of the we are other a, counties we are in a drought. And so I think when, the, when, when, when they look at that kind of data, that kind of evidence, uh, um, you know, that, that sort of uh, right. helps Georgia. But nobody's going to win. Uh, none of the three states are going to get what they want out of this if they don't settle, if they don't go outside that room and settle. Let's hit some of these top local news stories. Uh, bing, bang, bang. Kasim Reed, big, big week for him in the sense that uh, Anthem, the parent company of uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, announced they're moving 1,800 jobs into the Bank of America Tower uh, in Midtown. Mm -hmm. It fills a Atlanta's tallest building, which has been right. somewhat vacant. Uh, that's a great win for Governor Deal as well, luring them here. And it's and IT that goes jobs, with what are the, paying jobs. A bunch of other companies. All of this to me, uh, NCR, the others, Anthem that are coming in, shows to me that Georgia Tech is the most uh, unappreciated institution. It's an economic engine. It really it, is. It and really it's attracting is, a lot of... It really is, because they want to be there where Right, exactly. And so it's attracting a lot of innovation. It's, it's, a, it's a what a great research hub it's become. Now, mm -hmm. the, uh, the city and Kasim Reed, staying with him for a moment, has two ballot questions uh, on transportation. Mm -hmm. One is for a split penny for MARTA. Another is for a split penny uh, for general transportation improvements. Even though Kasim Reed can't be on the ballot next year, mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to see him on the airwaves. Uh, he's a good salesman, mm -hmm. and he's pitching these road improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt, Phil, that Atlanta, Atlanta will pass any tax. You <laughs> could ask Atlanta to <laughs> tax your firstborn son. Well, the do you realize if both of those pass in the city of Atlanta, the sales tax would be at 9%. That would be one of the highest in the country. It'll be and high. that's a sales tax that people ought to pay because they come into 9%. the city, they come into a city artificially small, then they go back out into the suburbs, they don't pay for any of the infrastructure right. that they use. Look, how'd you get to, how'd you, how'd you get to the studio that's this morning, right? That's not a good right? economic no, 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 uh, it, uh, uh, factoid. Well, the well, fact of the matter is property taxes have not increased under this mayor. If we get this 1% well, in, uh, in increase in sales taxes, it's from the people who are using the resources and who ought to be paying the tax. Well, it is a regressive tax, too, but I agree that the the benefit outweighs the, the heavy tax burden on the low-income folk One. because of so many people coming into the city during the day. One little cautionary note. Mm -hmm. Our friend Kyle Wingfield pointed this out, and I hadn't caught up to it, which is that the MARTA tax that's on the city ballot, now let's not get confused here, right. city voters have two votes to make, one for MARTA, one for transportation. Half a, half a penny. The MARTA uh, f uh, fraction of a penny has no specific plans. No. It, That's it, right. it really just, for Marta, here, you take him, it, and we'll figure it out later. You know, I, I saw Kyle's piece. I think that he knows where it's going. He even made reference to it. Uh, you know, there's this move to bring uh, Emory CDC in, in there and, and to finally uh, have some sort of a, uh, a train or uh, some sort of transit going up 
to that landlocked area where you've got this in the, the Emory Corridor. We should have specified, if, especially that. And, and we don't need to specify, but I think that once it becomes a city of Atlanta, that's got to be the priority and because it was one of the three priorities before. And let's so add that in the, 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 the rest of Fulton County, they're voting on a fractional penny for road and transportation improvements that don't include MARTA. Mm -hmm. And um, cities have got huge lists. Of, I think it was $90 million for Johns Creek, or was it 50 million? Whatever well, it was, it that's was That's right. Huge. I think it's 110 million in, in Sandy Springs to... Uh, yeah, that's a big number to give to Rusty Paul to play with, isn't it? I think you might have a no vote in North Fulton, but South Fulton will pass it. Uh, hmm. Okay, well anyway, that's confusing. Atlanta yeah. votes on two. Fulton votes oh, on another. Right. And of course, there's spl let's, let's remind, there's spots all over the metro yes. Atlanta region, right. too. And Gwinnett is looking at one, and uh, uh, who knows what's going to happen in, in Cobb County. Um, all right, um, th there's other smaller local news. Let's just take on one topic quickly. Here we go again with affirmative action at uh, Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. I think I might have done some of the very first stories on that back in uh, uh, the early 1980s. Here we've got one company complaining about a contract to uh, uh, move baggage underground. Right. And they're saying that they didn't get the contract because they didn't do right by minority hiring, but there are no minority firms who do the work. Well, that's right. Essentially. It's, it's, it's the, 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 the DBE and, you know, the city, not just under Kasim Reed, but the city has been wrestling with this. They've been sued. When I was with Southeastern Legal Foundation, they were challenging set-asides. Now they're supposedly... Oh, my God. I, let me yeah, finish. That's, that's let me finish. Work you all let me, let me finish. <laughs> just for the viewers, it it's 15%. You have to have this so-called goal. Uh, the city sometimes writes these contracts so narrowly that, that, that no one can get the goal. And here's the kicker. You've got to show, quote, good faith effort. Well, that's Kasim Reed and you his cronies go, you, you do that. Gotta, you ought to be able to do better than good faith effort. As far as we are into this, you ought to be able to go out and find a minority partner to when you're doing business at the airport. This is the best run airport in the world. Nobody can, no one can point to the any additional cost the contract that is screwed diversity up brings us at the airport. And if you had it your way, you'd do it the it's way that you've always done it for decades and leave everybody we, we else out. Get out. The mayor's office should not be controlling <clears throat> contracts. That's the bottom line. It's a 20 percent well, increase in the cost of every contract that's led anywhere. That's right. This they were going to force this well, company thing, to it, have a have a vendor that wasn't even a minority vendor, Jeff. What was all that about? I think they ought to be able to go out and find a qualified minority vendor to do work with them at the airport. But this work everybody is ought to was telling them well, everybody ought to do it. Well, we they, should have, they should be cultivating <laughs> these businesses and exactly help to right. incubate They're trying. Exactly we, we've right. got to get out. Tiny's going to tear a rotator cuff. we got to get out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, uh, we'll regroup, and it looks like politics is next on the plate. We'll be back. Have a question or comment for the Georgia gang? Visit their website at fox5atlanta.com. We've set a record discussing uh, constitutional amendments except on this broadcast, maybe mm -hmm. only with the exception of the lottery years ago. The reason is there's not much suspense on the overall ballot. You have a U.S. Senate race in which the Democrats simply are not competitive. Johnny Isaacson has now changed his advertising. It's almost as if he's running a textbook campaign. Yep. First we start with Johnny Isaacson, no Bio. like on Iran, right? No. Then constituent service, now a menu of things he'd like to accomplish, including repealing Obamacare. And Jim Barksdale's changed campaign managers. Right. Uh, the first got, time politician too. That, that Obamacare ad that Senator Isaacson has done is resonating because just this past week even the Obama administration admitted, oh my goodness, we lied, the premiums oh, are going did. up they, everywhere. They admitted to lying. You know, no, I don't think that they admitted Barack to Obama, lying. Wait they, a minute. They, Barack Obama said you get $2,500. Uh, that would be, you know, this isn't the Obamacare that Obama... That was a lie. That Obama, that was a lie. That, you can't that defend Barack it. Obama, oh, still oh, this, oh. Isn't the, this isn't the Obamacare that Barack Obama wanted. We know that. Every, right. You've been, you've been pushing for a single, single payer system not a single for a long Republican time. Well, how about crossing but state every, lines so that we can have some competition? Not a single Republican vote. That's, 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 that's what Trump, Trump says. says. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, what that's, that's what a lot of people said at the time. That's what Tom Price said. You know what? Going back to the Senate race, the Fox 5 poll last week that we didn't get a chance to do, they pointed out that there is a runoff provision in Georgia and the opinion-savvy poll that Mac Towery was going to report to us last week 
shows that Johnny is now over that threshold. Over and I the think 50 percent. Over the 50 percent threshold to, to not have a runoff. And so I think with the Obamacare news, I think the Democrats have had a bad week. Remember, not a single Republican of any stripe That's what I was supported to say. Obamacare. Except that the bill was patterned after Romney's plan. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. That, that's yes, the biggest, was. That, well, was that was the biggest that myth. Was the that was a compromise because that was not the plan that the that Democrats was the biggest wanted myth. at all. I, I, are you still defending Obamacare? Wait a minute, I, I got to get well, this straight. I'm defending the parts that are good, like people are hurting. But the middle class has been seven attacked. years after passage. You, you two are now saying. This isn't the Obamacare Obama wanted. Well, well of course said not. That. It was not what you were saying. It was the first. Why didn't we pass it? It was because law. because you got to do something. You have to start somewhere. It was the first iteration. It's something yeah. that's Amendment going one. to evolve like over Amendment time. One. Amendment yeah, one. It's, it's something that's going to, to evolve somewhere. over time. Start somewhere. You're no. changing your tune, Jeff. Yeah. You're changing the subject. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you but can't defend Obamacare, and I'm glad to hear you admit it. Hey, by the way, this is quite an admission here. It's a huge admission. It's a huge admission for these. Be turned Democrats. down for a pre-existing condition. This is good. Your young people can stay on their parents' health care until they're 26. This is good. There are no more maximum amounts that you, you can. You know what? The this Republicans were in favor of that, too. We just didn't want to have the right. subsidies. Who had health insurance who didn't have health insurance before. And, 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 and I'm worried about, about it. No Listen, one can I'm pay worried for about it. Anthem <laughs> moving all those jobs to Atlanta, the 1,800 jobs. Well, because that, Blue Cross Blue Shield is pulling out of a lot of markets. I mean, I'm not quite sure. This is a very answer. Let's, well, let's change well, the subject. Go back to Opinion to Savvy for a moment for right, Fox 5. Right. Uh, we did forget that because we didn't get the numbers in time. Right. What did Opinion Savvy have in the presidential race well, in Georgia? Well, it was far different from that AJC poll. <clears throat> uh, we've got Trump up five points uh, last week, and that was before Hillary had such a bad week this week. So Trump's going to carry Georgia. I don't care what the AJC opinion writers say. It's, I it's wish not. I felt so certain. But well, I, I do, too. I yeah, do, too. Yeah, yeah. And I, think, and, uh, uh, and I think early voting is look, showing that. Women voters are abandoning Donald Trump in droves. They yeah. are. It, specifically, the independents, right, so. though, college educated The independents right, are so. shifting toward Trump. That ought to worry you this week. It but. does worry me, but I have good blue faith that the rest workers, of the country will you. save us. You remember, the five, remember the five million missing voters, the blue-collar voters that Romney never got? Right. They're coming back. Well, I think they are all over the country. Right. And suddenly, and CNN... Still not enough, though, but, to but, but Georgia fascinates election. me because I, I think that's a pretty good piece of analysis, Phil. I think Hillary was peaking in Georgia, and I think Trump... Uh, has kind of staved it off and maintains a slight lead, even though it's a toss-up state. If I don't you... believe that it's a five-point lead. There is absolutely really? nothing out there that suggests that there's a five-point lead for either candidate in this state. It's so close. You're it's a heck of a lot closer. Poll, you don't, it's you a heck of a lot closer. Well, well I'm poll? saying that I think that 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 there's no five-point lead there. I think that this is a neck-and-neck neck con uh, contest. Well, I don't think they And made we're not it up. going to see where we. And I don't think that we made up the week before that it was 44-42. Well, this right? poll, this just poll, depends on this who's poll polling. does online polling, which a lot of these pollsters don't do. It does right. cell phone polling, and it does traditional landline polling. And more of these polling organizations need to be doing that. We got, we have to I get think out. that's an effective way to poll. We'll see what the spread is. We, 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 we have, we have to get out. I just want the last word week. quickly on this. Uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign is being rocked by these internal emails released by WikiLeaks, well, leaks. Well, the corruption is incredible. It is incredible. Spelling corruption. out the corruption is pretty, it's pretty corruption. startling. It's Bill Clinton getting nine hundred thousand dollars in speech fees from. You and, know, Bob, and, Bob well, Woodward, the liberal journalist, but, even but the, the liberal journalist get out. Woodward well, saying, says but they're corrupt. But there is no evidence that he's getting the play for the pay. There is evidence that they're trying to get money, but they keep mm -hmm. asking for money and asking for favors. Read, they get the money, emails. but they don't get the favors. But it's shocking. The campaign will only, that will only work against Hillary Clinton if the mainstream press latches onto the story, and they're not, unfortunately. Social media well, that's is, the, yeah, that is it's the weapon. It's all over the place. All you got to do is read the New York Times, the Washington Post. Right, we gotta get out. Are there. Well, well, I want it leading the network news. That's what I want to see. Well, we got Donald Trump leading the network news Every because that's night. where he wants to be. All right, when we come back, <laughs> when we come back, we will look at winners and losers. It's going to be easy this week. Stay with us. <laughs> Time now for the week's winners and losers. Okay, let's begin with Jeff Dickerson. Uh, Craig Lesser's my winner. He uh, received from the Atlanta Regional Commission the Harry West Award for all of his, his long years and decades of uh, public service in Atlanta. I think it's well deserved. Uh, Loser is Jeffrey Breedlove, you know, who made a statement in just a couple of months ago about some road in South DeKalb being ground zero of everything wrong in DeKalb County. <laughs> and now we know who what's wrong in DeKalb County because he was caught smoking crack over there. About a block away. About a block away. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Nancy Jester's fired uh, chief of staff. Right. Uh, wow. She cut him loose uh, real quickly. Phil, what do you have? You know, since you mentioned the ARC, I totally agree with you on your Craig Lesser uh, winner of the week. And another winner of the week is Mark Burkhalter. Remember Mark, the uh, North Fulton businessman? He has now been named to the uh, uh, ARC, and they need some business people on there. I tell you, it's been tilted against that. So he's a winner. And you know, Clarence Thomas, the Georgian who's our U.S. Supreme Court Justice, mm -hmm. I, I wish John Lewis would intervene or someone would intervene with the new African American Museum in D.C. He needs to have a prominent place. There. I don't care what you think of his politics or his rulings, but, but he needs that honor. Oh, I, boy, I couldn't agree. You took that one away from me. Alexis, what do you have? Okay, I'm going to salute Clark Atlanta University. They have a, a painting by Henry O. Tanner, the great uh, African American artist on loan to the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. for five years. So congratulations to them from their exquisite art collection. And then I'm going to salute Alice Murray and Bryce McNeil, both of Georgia State, uh, regarding the um, College Media Association convention that was here this week. All and right. They it's great. Thank you. Sorry. And uh, I, I guess I'm squeezed <laughs> for time. Yep. I'll just say, as I always do, hey, but this day, the Falcons are the game of the week nationally on Fox this afternoon. This kickoff moved to the 4 o'clock slot. And the Falcons need a win against the very difficult Green Bay Packers. We'll see you next week on the Georgia Gang. The opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the panelists appearing in this program.